Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to a belated October reading wrap-up. It's now December the 1st as I'm shooting this, so I really need to get this filmed and edited, along with a September one, my bad, and uh, film, my, film my November reading wrap-up. But this shouldn't take too long because... For the first time in my life, I had a bit of a reading slump. So October was also when I went on holiday to Spain with my dad, and I was just so busy while I was there, I didn't really get anything done, uh, and a very little reading. It was also too hot to read, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I only read about ten books, I think. But I'm going to take you through what I read in October. So we'll start with We Are Lucifer by Amy McLean. So Amy is a, a booktuber slash movie reviewer, author tuber, all that good stuff. So definitely check her out. I read this for Todd and Danes, Indie Read Along. And I've filmed a review of this, which I believe has been posted. So I'll link to that below. I'll read you the blurb. In a peaceful thicket of Hampstead Heath, a recently bequeathed house awaits a new family. For Amber Quigley, however, there is no babe in the cradle. She is incomplete without a child to nest with in her ancestral home. Rocked by the perils of her tormented mind, Amber promises to herself that she will find a child of her own to love. Whatever it takes, no matter how daunting, she is determined to fill her rocking arms with her own baby. As she plots to find the family she craves, Amber vows to fight against any obstacles that barricade her from her child, no matter how many lives she may destroy along the, the way. Now, this from the title I thought was going to... I knew it was kind of like a horror novel, but I was expecting it to be more sort of demonic and devilish, I suppose. Whereas it's more like a thriller, almost in the vein of like Gone Girl and stuff like that. Basically, the main character's a little bit unhinged. She does some really crazy stuff. At one point, she drills some uh, holes through some people's feet and then puts metal bands through them so they can't run away, which I think is a genius idea. All in all, I did like this. Uh, there's a lot of suspense to it as well. And if you're a horror reader, uh, or even just a thriller reader, I think you'll enjoy this. So I give it a 3.75 out of 5, I believe. Okay, then we have Gorgeous Georgians by Terry Deary. So this is another one of the Horrible Histories books. So this one is for if you want to know if you, who, if you would make a good body snatcher, what the Georgians did with squashed fish eyes, and who wore false eyebrows made from mouse skin. Now... I'm not particularly interested in the Georgians. I kind of saved this one till near the end, to be honest, just because I didn't particularly fancy getting to it. It was all right. I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. It was all factually correct as far as I could tell. I'm just not particularly interested in the Georgians. But uh, if you are a child or if you have a child who is interested in the Georgians, this book will uh, be a good little read. Okay, then we have Shaking Hands with Death by Terry Pratchett. So I'll read you the blurb here. We all deserve a life worth living and a death worth dying for. Most men don't fear death. They fear those things, the knife, the shipwreck, the illness, the bomb, which proceed by milliseconds if you're lucky and many years if you're not, the moment of death. When Terry Pratchett was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in his 50s, he was angry, not with death, but with the disease that would take him there and with the suffering disease can cause when we are not allowed to put an end to it. In this essay, broadcast to millions as the BBC Richard Dimbleby Lecture 2010, he argues for our right to choose, our right to a good life and a good death too. So basically, Terry Pratchett was uh, pro-euthanasia, and uh, it was something he campaigned for, obviously having out Alzheimer's himself. And this was just a really kind of quite haunting to read, if anything, because obviously I'm reading it now after his death. And uh, Terry Pratchett is my most read author. I absolutely love him. And uh, yeah, I shed a, shed a tear or two while reading this, but I, I do think it's a very important little book. Okay, then we have Future Brain by Dr. Jenny Brockis. The 12 keys to create your high-performance brain. What if you could boost your brain's mastery, efficiency, and productivity to gain an edge in everything you do? Future Brain reveals how you can expand your brain's capability to think well under stress, to focus and get more out of your day, to be more creative and innovative, and to prepare you for future challenges. Utilizing, I hate that word, the latest neuroscientific principles, Dr. Jenny Brockish shows how you can boost your brain fitness by developing a habit-changing plan to get more done with less effort. Learn how to use mindfulness to regain control of your thinking. Prime your brain by exercising at the optimal time. Reframe stress to make it work for you. Minimize fatigue at work. In 12 key areas, Future Brain presents simple action-based principles that can be readily incorporated into your daily routines to train your brain for high performance. Dr. Jenny Brockis is a medical practitioner, healthy brain advocate, and future mind planner. She is the director and founder of BrainFit. So I read this basically for a client. I'm getting paid to basically like read books and then write kind of spark notes summaries of them. I thought this was okay. It did have a few things that I took away from it. I mean, books like this, to be honest, they're they're a bit ten a penny these days, and this didn't stand out over any others for me. I can't really remember too much of it even. So. 
that said, I mean, it was professionally done. There was a lot of science in there backing up, um, you know, lots of sources and stuff and studies to back up what she said. So I'll, I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. All right, then we have If Cats Could Talk, The Meaning of Meow by, Meow by Michael B. Furting. And it's literally just cats with little captions. So how many dogs does it take to screw in a light bulb? All of them. One to turn it and the rest are running around in circles and bark at it. <laughs> then is it good luck if I cross your path? Let's do one more. Hard day, hairball. Enough said. So yeah, pretty cute. I'll give it a four out of five. I would only, I would say though, only get this if you get it like second hand or a car boot sale or something like that, because it's not worth paying full price for. But you know, it's a, it's a bit gimmicky, but it's enjoyable. All right, here we have what's cooking vegetarian uh, by goodness knows Par by Paragon Press, and this is just vegetarian recipes now. Obviously, I'm vegan, so I had to veganize some of them, but it wasn't too difficult. This was, uh, I mean, it was outdated, to be honest. I think I only tried two recipes from it, but I'm trying to, when I get, I did try that one, actually, the one on the cover. But um, I'm trying to review cooking, like, cookbooks once I've tried all the recipes in them I'm interested in. This one I'll give a two out of five, just because there weren't that many recipes. They weren't particularly great. And uh, also, I had to veganize it as well. And just, yeah. All right, then we have My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I don't have a blurb for you because this edition doesn't have a, a blurb. It's from the Reprint Society. I wonder if it's got a year. First published 1951. This edition published by the Reprint Society Limited by arrangement with Victor Golanx Limited, 1952. So, yeah, pretty old book. Um, I, unfortunately, didn't enjoy it. I gave it a 2 out of 5. It, it just... I don't know. I enjoyed Rebecca, and don't get me wrong, like, de Maurier's writing style is great, and she's, like, clearly a very talented writer. I just wasn't too involved in the story and just wanted it to end, which is a shame because I did it as a buddy read with some people as well. All right, then we have Terry Deary, Groovy Greeks. This is for when you want to know why some groovy Greek girls ran about naked pretending to be bears, who had the world's first flushing toilet, and why dedicated doctors tasted their patients' earwax. Now, the Greeks I do like a little bit more. I still don't necessarily enjoy them as much as the Romans, the Vikings, that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, they're a fascinating civilization. I like looking at the Greeks and the Romans and looking at what they stole from each other as well, which is always fun. I will give this one, I'll give it a 3.75 out of 5. Yeah, I mean, there's not too much I can say about these. They're horrible histories books. Okay, then I read I, Robot by Isaac Asimov. This was actually a reread for me. This was for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. I did a full review of this, which I'll link to below. Basically, this is short story collections. Not at all related to the movie, even though this is the movie uh, cover, you know. But um, the, basically, the only thing the movie and, and the book have to that tie them together are the three laws of robotics, which actually I'll read to you now. So the three laws of robotics are sort of... They're influential, that's it. They're influential in like the world of sci-fi and stuff, and literature in general, I suppose. So the three laws of robotics. One, a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Two, a robot must obey the orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Three, a robot must protect its own existence, as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. And then basically, the stories in this collection all examine those laws and uh, the way they're put into practice, you know? It's fascinating. It's almost uh, philosophical in some ways. And more relevant now than when he wrote it, I think, with the rise of stuff like AI. Okay, and finally, this is why I didn't read a huge amount this month. I read Black House by Stephen King and Peter Straub. And I'm going to give this a, a low 3 out of 5. I mean, it was professional, I guess. It just bored the pants off me. So this is the sequel to The Talisman. And The Talisman was better. I still didn't think The Talisman was great. But, um... That was kind of almost like fantasy and like a portal adventure with like a different world and stuff. And then this one is basically like a police procedural. And it just goes on for far too long. So I didn't really enjoy it. This was what I was reading in Spain. I think I ended up reading this over like three weeks or something. It's like the longest I've read a single book in ages. But um, at least I've ticked it off. But Stephen King in future. Stop writing books for Peter Straub and just write books by yourself. Like... Just imagine what you could have done. So yeah, ending this uh, wrap up on a bit of a downer really. But anyway, that's what I read in the month of October. Hopefully my November wrap up will be coming soon. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit subscribe if you're new here. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.